Hey, I'm Nathan Tabor with Handling Life. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really you know, excited today about the guest that we have on. His name is Rashawn Copeland. Uh, met him through some podcasts and Facebook and kind of a friend through a friend. Um, gotten to know him uh, decently over the last couple of weeks and really excited about the type of ministry that he's involved, some of the things he's been launching. He's got a ministry called Without Walls. Uh, you can yeah. find out more about that at Copeland. And that's C-O-P-E-L-A-N-D ministries.org. Rashawn, thanks so much for joining me today, brother. I'm glad to have you on the Handling Life uh, podcast. Thank you so much, Nathan. It's, I'm humbled and privileged and excited to be on with you today. And also, uh, you've been such an encouragement along the way as I've watched you pour into all the people at Bible time. You know, like it's been really cool to see what God, how God uses you, bud. So appreciate you. You know, it's um, it's always a struggle, right, to open up, especially yeah. especially today, because we're we're, a, and I'm gonna be kind in this. We're slightly judgmental in our society. Mm. Actually, yeah. we're really judgmental. So, it's, you know, to see people open up and say, "Hey, hey, I did this great thing. That's that's easy." But hey, I failed over here. That's kind of hard to do these days, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's really hard to do, especially in a world that. Are of individuals that are so closed off because of the hurt that they've experienced in the past is sort of, you know, sort of people are building, building walls instead of bridges. So I'm with you on that, but yeah. yeah. So in your ministry, the without walls, what do you, what do you do there? What's the purpose? What is God calling you to do and to share with others? So our main thing, man, is a big part of it is tearing down walls uh, the walls of the church. So we're having a welcoming, more inviting atmosphere for people to experience God, yeah. through, whether it's through the context of, um, uh, of social media, or if it's in the context of just being able to connect and relate to people, you know, build people's trust and respect through love, you know, meeting them where they are. That's the big thing with me is, um, I believe that anyone can start where they are and God will take them where they need to be. And if we as a church could be more, you know, open to just love people and not necessarily give them access to our hearts, but love people where they are, I think it will change the world. That's what Jesus did, you know? Yeah. You would meet people where they are. So So I'll throw this out out at you and see what you think about this. Okay. I, li I like that statement. So I I I, I agree with you. Got it. Here's what I think is the disconnect. You tell me if you agree or disagree. Okay. We have a really hard time these days, politics or religion or denominations, what, you know, a mix of all of that, of loving someone who we disagree with. Yeah. So, I, you know, I might not like your lifestyle. I might not like your politics. I might not like, but what are we still called to do? We're still called to preach the gospel and share truth, but truth plus love. It's no good to have like this megaphone and, and, and share all these encouraging words if it's not edifying and building, you know, people, up, you know, building people up into the truth. I think a lot of times people take the gospel, the Bible's uh, clear where it says, um, you know, the, 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 the word of God, the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. But here's another thing is that, um, you know, uh, people, you know, it's hard for people to really, you know, connect with something they don't know. Yeah. It's hard for darkness to see the light, you know, and if we truly get real and honest with it, we know everyone is longing for the light. Everyone wants the light, but not everyone will humble themselves and come to the light, you know? So, yeah. A amen, brother. And the only way yeah. you can do that. I can't love people I don't like. Mm. The only way I can love them is through my relationship with God. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I love that. So true. That's the only way. Yeah. And, you know, in that too, just because you love them and you reach out to them and you spend time with them doesn't yeah. mean you have to agree with them. Like Jesus with the woman at the well, he didn't yeah. go back to her house. He didn't engage in her lifestyle but he engaged sure. in her life. Yeah. So good. Very true. He, 
and 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 what what I loved about that too um is how he, when he met her at that well uh she was explaining you know are you not better than our 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 um our poor you know Jacob are you not better than Jacob that provided this well and you know who had his sons come up here and you know all this livestock and he said if you only knew what the gift of God is like what I have for you is far greater than what Jacob had for you. And, you know, like this everlasting water, this everlasting life. And like, I thought that was so amazing how he basically educated her. He, you know, sort of sent her out to be the first female evangelist. And she got her whole city saved through what she knew. That enabled her to forget the shame, forget the guilt, but walk in love and, and share you know, like share Jesus, what just happened to her, you know, and that yeah. changed everything. And I think that's what God is about, man, sending us into the purpose that he has for us. And it, ch- it changes everything. I love it. Oh yeah. So we, with, with your ministry without walls, uh-huh. what's a couple of the things that you're working on or that, you know, people could get involved with, or, you know, what are you doing that you could, others could come alongside you and help with? Okay, sweet. Well, what what I'm currently doing is we're basically building up a team of people all the way from, you know, we have someone in South Queens all the way to the Philippines, uh, where we have teams of graphic designers, volunteers, uh, different people who can come on, encourage, um, educate and equip people to further the gospel through the lens of social media. I feel called specifically uh, to share the gospel on social media because Jesus met me there. You know, there was a lot of seeds planted as I grew up and I came across this young lady, the only Christian that I followed, and she was sharing this beautiful scripture online. And that sort of, you know, softened my heart. That changed my outlook on even my own life, what she shared that day. And now I feel super encouraged to do the same is build up people to be confident in their faith and to share the word of God uh, through, you know, not only online, but, you know, do it in all they do, like bring glory to God, you know, in their life and whatever it looks like. So that's what I would love to do, like partner with anyone who will want to get involved uh, without, without walls ministry with as far as content or just volunteering to pray for people and love them and meet them where they are. So. That's awesome, man. You know, I really yeah, like that you. point that you're talking about sharing the gospel online. Yeah. yeah, bro. You know, it's growing up. I grew up in the South and there's this immediate when you say share the gospel that people, you know, turn to televangelist or the preacher that you pull the string in the back and they scream for the next 30 minutes. Yeah, for sure. That's not that's not. If that's your style, if that's your style, great. But that's not what you have to do to share the gospel. You could share the gospel with someone. You could show the love of Christ to someone and not carry a Bible around. True, true. You could share someone by, you know, like you're talking about, you know, just going on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, sitting out somewhere and just asking someone, hey, how's your day going? Yeah, so good. True. engaging with them, listening to them for a moment and then saying, Hey, well, you know, I'm sorry, you're going through that. I went through something really bad or stressed out or whatever it is. Tell your story. Very Jesus, much. He was a prolific storyteller. True. Yes. True stories. And what connects with someone is if you can show them your vulnerability. Mm-hmm. I'm not, yeah. a, I, I don't want to be a Christian walking around going, Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm good and I'm better than you because I'm a Christian. No, I want to share with you what I have so you can have it. Amen. Amen. And we would be doing them a disservice, I think, even the world to not bear witness. You know, even the scripture says Jesus was a friend of sinners. Like he would go into places that were dark to bring the light and to bring truth, to bring love. And I think if we were not to be conduits and expressions of God's glory, to make, you know, his name glorified, you know, through our love, not through just our words, but through our love and action, um, what are we doing, you know? So I'm with you, brother. 
I'm yeah. with you on that. That's all. You know, think about it this way. If you knew the cure to cancer wow. and you didn't tell anybody and you didn't tell your friends, you didn't tell your family members, you didn't tell other people around, what would people think about you? Mm. He, well, no heart. heart no yeah. heart? Selfish? Selfish. You know, you know the, the Grinch, Scrooge? Yeah. Well, this is what I yeah. tell, tell myself, but then I also tell others. You and me, or you and I, I guess is the correct, and everyone else who is saved, we have the cure to escape hell. Truth. But we don't want to tell people about it because we're embarrassed, we're ashamed. Yeah. We, we've been told by culture, keep that to yourself. Right. Yeah. You know, would you rather offend someone here today or offend someone when they're standing in front of God being judged? I'd rather offend them right now through just speaking truth. I'm not I'm not speaking on my own behalf. I'm speaking on the behalf of Christ. Therefore, don't, you know, I didn't say it. God said it. He's right. saying it. You know, so don't be mad at me. I'm just a messenger of Christ. Well, if I know I know the scripture is clear where, you know, prophets, if you're loved by the world, are you are you even you know, a follower of Christ, like, and this is the thing what's important for all of us to get, is that imagine not taking a moment to, to, to imagine keeping the veil over uh, someone's eyes because of your need or desire to please them rather than to please God. That's, that's not where, that's not where, what we're called to walk. That's not God's will for our life. We're called to please God, you know, so I, I, even if it hurts others are ourselves yeah um, we just have That's to good. trust that god's that holiness is better than happiness and being helpful to god is better being than being helpful to people on their own side yep that's good that's really good so let me ask yeah. you this what age did you come to know the lord you said you'd, you'd known it through social media and what was your life like before christ okay love it bro um i actually What's wild about that is I'm in Oklahoma City. I went to college here, University of Central Oklahoma. I ended up commissioning into the Army and moved to San Antonio, Texas uh, for military medical school. And I decided I don't want to go this route. I don't want to do the nine to five route. So I became a, a dream chaser. I decided I'm going to leave what I know here and go into the Army Reserve and depart, you know, sort of pridefully move out to L.A., and chase fame and money and fortune. So I moved to Los Angeles seeking my own glory. I moved to Los Angeles seeking to have this, my own crazy story, like a good life. And when I got out there, I began to get you know successful in the eyes of the world. I was making tens of thousands of dollars. I was a part of some of the largest groups of very, if I said his name, a lot of people who are in the hip hop community, they would know him. And I was, you know, living in the valley, had some of the most, you know, I, I began to get the women that I desired and life was quote unquote good. Yeah. Outwardly. Inwardly, I was empty. I was void. My, I was drained. I was lonely. There were so many things that I couldn't quite explain in that season of my life. However, uh, there became a moment, an instance where my friends, things, God began to start pruning stuff unbeknown to me. I didn't know, but he began to start stripping things away from me. And in the depravity of that, I cried out to him one night, sitting in my house in the valley. And I come across, uh, I was, you know, meditating whether or not I should commit suicide. I was like hmm. trying to uh, think what's the quickest route out of this. But however, before you know, I decided to go in the other room and get the gun. I pick up my phone and I come across a young lady's post. The only girl that I knew um, that was a Christian um, and she went to Baylor University and I pick up my phone. I'm reading the post that she had and it happened to be the first post that was on my timeline. And the post said this, it said Romans chapter something. I couldn't remember at the time, but it was, Oh, how wide, how deep, how vast the love of God is. And nothing in all creation 
can separate us from the love that's found in Christ Jesus. As I began to read that, I began to start weeping. My heart was so wow. every time I read it. I read it 20 times. And all of a sudden, I cried out to God like I never cried out to him before. Um, I, I, I was yearning to n- just know who he was. And I said, Still, I'm not going to leave this room until you tell me who you are. I'm not going to leave this room until you're clear about who you are and why am I here. And I end up, man, out of nowhere, falling asleep. And I had an OBE. My soul left my body. I can't explain it. I was looking down at myself sleep. I was in a, a supernatural realm, a, a spiritual realm. And at, at that point, I knew that this life, this body that I'm in is just temporarily, it's, it's a temporary, temporary state. And that one day I'm going to stand before my maker, my creator. And that changed everything for me. But to close it off, just real quick, I look underneath my bed the next morning. I pull out uh, this suitcase. I open it up. And this suitcase, I didn't know. I didn't know whose suitcase it was because I was in a traveler's home where our agent would put us in a home, a nice home in the valley for the artists, for the creators. And I didn't know who bag this was. I opened it up. At the very top of the bag was a Bible I'd never seen before. So <laughs> I pick up this Bible, open up this Bible. I go to the red letters. And these letters said uh, this. It said this. I went to the red letters. That's all that stood out. And it said this. Uh, Jesus, his words, he that wants to keep his life will lose it. But he that loses his life for my name's sake shall gain it. And what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but yet lose his soul? And at that point, I wept. I was done. I, I was like, I'm done with my life. What do I have to do to follow you? I kept reading and I finally found out. I must deny myself and follow him. So that's where my story was. One of the most defining moments in my life. That's a um, man. It gives me chill bumps to, to oh, hear that of, you know, because you. when you were at that point in your life where a lot of people are, you feel like yes. you lose hope, right? Yes. Yes. You lose focus. You, you just get, down and out. And that's why, in my opinion, I think scripturally wise too, it's so critical for Christians yeah. to be doing what God has called them to do. Show the love of yes. Christ to others and share the gospel. Because if this young lady had not been sharing stuff, yeah, what would have happened had you not seen it? Wow. So true. So true. And, and he used that young lady. Yeah. He used her whether she knew it or not. You know, so our work's not done in vain. I believe that none of our work is done in vain unto the glory of God. And and even if it's for ourselves, he says, as long as the name of Christ is lifted up, he's going to draw all men. So he's even used some of the, you know, even in the scripture, it talks about that clearly. Like um, whenever he goes to the point, you know, as long as Christ is being preached, that's all that matters. As long yeah. as Christ is being preached, God is going to use his name for his glory yep plant the seeds right yes yes plant the seeds Church, just let 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 the holy spirit do the work plant the seeds though wow so wh- how, how long ago was that what what year was that that you came to know the lord about four and a half years ago so that that was um fairly recent uh yeah it was definitely a little bit after my college years yeah yeah. Hey man, that that uh, praise the Lord on that because as you know, the older people get, the harder it is to deal with that pride and deal with that life. True. Hey, I, I need some someone here. So, what what in that four and a half years since? Um, I want to hear obviously what the Lord has done good for you, but what's what's some of the struggles that because everyone still has struggles and. What are things you've found in your life if someone has a similar struggle? that you found helps you stay, you know, where God wants you to grow that relationship with the Lord in that. Would you mind sharing that some, some of those things with us? Definitely. Definitely. So what's helped me along the way from that moment going forward is uh, somehow God's given me an evangelist heart. Um, But more, more than that, I have to remember that before I'm a minister, one of the big things, before I'm a minister, I'm a child of God. The biggest thing is birthed out of my identity. 
and who I am and who I perceive myself is, is going to be the largest effect, the biggest effect on how my influence is going to carry out to the world. So with that being said, if I don't take myself to the point where God met me every single day, if I don't I began with the perspective of how I should start every day with gratitude and thanksgiving because I'm unworthy of anything he's does, done for me, anything that I have, anything that I do. It's all him. Um, that, that's been the centerpiece of my walk with, with, with him. The cross has made me who I am, and it's also enabling me to do what he's called me to do. And yeah, man, so I would say being sensitive to his Holy Spirit has changed me, and I would encourage anyone listening, tap in to his spirit, tap into God through prayer, tap in, fill yourself with his word, you know, speak it over your life, um, and remember that he's the same God who meets you in your mess, he loves you through it, and he leads you out of it, and that's how we all should live and walk, and breathe, you need to, yeah, really have that perspective, and that's what changes everything, is is working from a place of rest in him right that's, that's my big thing that I yeah, and that and that that's a struggle at times it's easy yeah. to say hey you know i'm going to rest in in god i'm going to yeah. give it over to him i'm going but it really it takes an effort it's not something you can just say it, it takes getting yeah. to know him you know praying and reading yeah. his word and developing that relationship i like one of the yeah. comments you said about you know knowing your role and that's something that can can become quickly turned upside down because yeah. the number one goal we're called is to be, you know, a man of God or a woman of God or a child yeah. of God is our personal relationship. Yes. Next is, you know, yeah. to be a, a godly spouse, godly uh -huh. husband or a godly wife. And then a, a godly parent, a father or mother, and then a man, you know, ministry if you know you've been called into that but if you get those out of order it can cause some serious issues in your life so true brother so true he is a god of order i love that man have you ever noticed like that's why i think it's clear when the scripture says in him do we live and do we be and do we have our being there's no way it's a destructive path for part from god whether we even if it's the most delicate steps away from him it's still going to affect us in the end. That's why my prayer is that we remember that he's a God of details. He's a God who loves us, but he's a God who's truthfully speaking into us uh, to help us move according to him and not the world. And yep. I, I, I would love to encourage someone out there, you focus on the details rather than the overall picture. Um, and, and yeah, brother, I'm, I'm with you on that. You know, he's a, he's a God of order. He's also a God of simplicity. He doesn't, he doesn't tell us, Hey, you do this, 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 there's not this laundry, which is in my mind at times, one of my yeah. struggles and a lot of people struggles. Well, you know, if I, if I do this for God, there's going to be all this stuff I have to do. Yeah. But in reality, you know, Peter walking on water or whatever it may be, there was really only one or two, really one obey me. Wow. True. Cause if we're obeying God, then all the little facets of life that we get tied up in they don't matter anymore because god's moving those pieces around in our life true true i the conflict i used to get myself into four five six years ago and past i have very little of that today you know the only thing that has changed is my relationship with god wow so why is, why is that because i don't argue back with people before I respond to that email, I take 30 minutes or three days and let the human side pass and then see the bigger picture. Yes. Love it. And so it, it takes that, right? It's simplistic. Now, we make it hard by the choices we make or the things we put into it. But I like that, you know, because God is a law. He is of order and he is very simplistic. Yes. And what he asks us to do. In in parallel with that, brother Nathan, I wanna I wanna definitely highlight. I love how you said he's a god of simplicity. Uh, I remember a guy recently. He said something that really 
really held it really it really penetrated my heart uh the, when we come to situations like that as you were talking about referring to answering an email or you know even if it's answering a phone call and that person is just full of hostility and anger um remember the, he said this he said the devil yells but god whispers and yeah. and I, that really stuck and hit me hard because at the end of the day god is not a god of confusion of, of disorder but of order and peace so god is always going to speak to us the holy spirit's a gentle is a gentleman he's a gentleman god's a gentleman he's going to speak to us delicate truths but these truths are going to be transforming in our lives which you are transformed even in the moments of waiting between you got the time you got received the email and the time that you were sending it god was tra- you know working on your heart yeah. and enabling you to do so so that's beautiful well and those those are the moments where we can show someone the love of christ right without ever yeah. mentioning christ wow it's good you're married you're married how many children you have you're married and uh, i have a t- total of three children well one in the womb so I have a nine-year-old, uh, we are a blended family, and then I have a one-year-old, the one in the womb coming in yes. July. So, you know, with, with your spouse, with your wife, a soft answer turns away wrath, right? So true. Very true. But that takes it, you and me with my wife being where God wants us to be and being in that humble, yes. meek spirit. To where we yes. can absorb and help. And same with my wife, same thing. Because normally when somebody's coming at you, whether you're married to them or a business partner or, or just out in public, they might be upset about a thing with you, but they're also bringing all the other frustrations wow. and stress from everything else going on in their life. And they're getting ready yes. to hit you with it. And if you hit back, what happens? You know, explosion. Yep. Explosion. So that's the question. Do we react or do we respond? Like responding, I think in a way is like being humble before the Lord, responding to him before you respond to your wife, yes. responding to him before you respond to your enemy. Are your, you know, those people who despitefully use you, how will we be able to say the holy spirit is smarter than i am the holy spirit is wiser than i am you know even if i feel like it's a time to respond right now this you know i know that this isn't lining up with what god is wanting his desire for me so yeah that's really true it is you know and that's the interesting part about a relationship with god because a lot of these things that we would say just in our lives they're common sense yes whether you're a christian or not a christian you know be kind to one another or Mm. love one another i mean it's the same principle but what i have found in my life the only way i can strive to maintain a level to where i don't just take it and take it and then it really explode is through god Yes. And that's the that's the difference, right? Uh Uh-huh. That's the difference. Is being able to be content and joyful and at peace versus being happy and you know things are going good right now. But as soon as they don't do good, then you're not happy. Whereas if you're content, you can maintain your joy. Well, that's it. That's the key. Easy to say, hard, hard ish. Hard, hard. It, it, the hard, the further you are away from God, the harder it is to do. True. Very true. So, so let me ask you this: point. in okay. your in your opinion, there, like you know, for whoever's listening here, if if they're saved, they have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, and they're struggling to kind of find who they are or where they should be. What's from you, from your life, from your perspective, what's a couple of things you would tell them to do? If you're in a place where you're struggling to find who you are, who you are 
and yeah. what God is calling you to do. Um, I would. There's no, hey, there's no right. There's no right or wrong answer here because this is your perspective. I mean, some people, you know, have different ways of coming to that. So this is more from you. Like, what do you do, or what do you? You know, if your friend was sitting across from you at a coffee shop and was asking this, hey, Rashawn, I'm I'm really struggling today, brother. Okay. What would you tell? What, what What's your advice? What would you say to someone back that's in your, whether you know them or not, that comes to you and says, hey, I don't want to serve God today, or hmm. I'm fighting with my spouse, or so what's some advice you would give to them that's worked in your life? I don't. I would say I would encourage them that your proximity um I would say you could just draw close to him even if you don't feel like it he wants you I would give the truth about who God is and how even if you don't want him he still wants you and like sort of pray that they'll prospect I'll pray over him and pray that They'll, God will be able to soften their hearts to um, the truth of who he is, just his, their creator, their, how amazing he is, how he's almighty and awesome, um, even if they feel awful towards him, even if they feel awful towards themselves, the truth, reminding them of the truth, showering them with uh, of God's goodness. Uh, just like the scripture of the goodness of the Lord draws men to repentance, I, I would want to overly stress how how. Even scripture, James says he jealously longs for the spirit that he's allowed to dwell in them. So like really putting the perspective back on God and what he's done for them through the cross, you know, through Jesus, uh, his bloodshed and how we are awful apart from him, how we are, are totally unable to to do any good things apart from him. And our lives can be changed as we draw closer to him. Like yeah. I would want to highlight god's goodness though that would be my number one thing is perspective like getting them back their eyes back on the cross through prayer or through you know just ministering to them in love by being jesus you know actually more through actions like comforting them through words or through you know a hug or you know um just being sensitive to what god's doing of course most of it's going to be spirit led like allowing God to speak to me while I'm with them. Yes. Yep. And, and sort of like John, whenever he laid his head on the chest of Jesus, the bosom of Jesus. And I would love to be that, 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 you know, be Jesus for them. I would love to hold on to them and be like, Hey man, reassure them of, of who they are in Christ and um, allow them to be reminded that maybe the reason we're intim you're intimidated. I'm intimidated about what we're facing right now is because of our lack of intimacy with God, you know, our lack of not being close to him the way we should be or the way we, he longs for us to be. And like, just pour into him, man. I don't, I know it's not a right answer. No, hey, no, that that's good because one of the things when we're going through a struggle, hmm. what do we want to do? We want to blame everyone else except who? ourselves so you know every problem that i have is someone else's except mine Got it. and when somebody gets to that point i mean if they're way down that even if they're you know a little bit down the path or way down that path it's like hey hold up what you said there is really good advice because stop focusing on what everybody else is doing or saying wow. and start focusing on where are you with god come on come on in our in our mentality and in our language today, um, we have this thought process of the way we say things of, you know, I'm waiting on God. Wow. Why are you waiting on him? He's waiting on me. But God's already laid out everything that he wants yeah. for me. And he's already established everything he's going to do for me. Or, you know, where is God? Where's God in my life? Mm, wow. no, where where are you with God in your life? Almost oh. the same thing, but a different mentality because it's not where is God? It's hey, God's right behind you. Or God's right yeah. off to the side where you can't see him. You I've turned my back on God. 
God hadn't turned wow. his back on me. Wow. And bro, do you know what really highlights this to me? Like, I think of this in the mornings. Like, there's some mornings where I just don't feel like, I don't feel like pressing in. I rather do what I naturally would want to do, which is do my own thing. However, yeah. Jesus made it so clear whether or not are we willing. He said, if any man wants to come after me again, we must deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him. It actually takes doing something, not just waiting, but da daily. Up take up our cross daily. daily. It's us yeah. doing something. Wow. It's like the it's like the person going and sitting underneath the apple tree. God, I sure am hungry. Can you give me one of those apples? By wow. the time God gives you that apple, you know what's happened? That apple's rotten. Wow. Come on. So, I mean, we have to do our part. Get up. And so there's two parts in this. We got to get up and, you know, reach up and grab the apple, climb the tree and get the apple, but also don't go past God's will. Don't climb all the way out on the end of the branch. Yes. Because the branch will break. Yeah. It'll break. So there is there. We, that's the, the and that only comes through the relationship with God is, you know, when when do we be still? When yeah. do we move? How fast do we move? Yeah. And there's no I can't point somebody to a scripture and say this is how to know exactly the steps. One, two, three of God's will for your life. Yeah. But I can say, is it, does it bring you closer to God or does it yeah. take you further away from God? Really good. Really good. And, and I love how you're, you're talking about that a bit because me and some young adults in our Bible study, we're constantly wrestling with what is God's will for my life? What is God's will for your life? What is God's will? But I think in the most simplistic form, if we look at it parallel, um, God's daily will for our life is that we'll be with him moment by moment. It's like unfolding moment by moment, I feel. And then his big will is more revealed over time. Uh, that's just how I see it as I'm, I'm just reading yeah. through the narrative of scripture. Um, there, Peter and John and them, they knew that the ultimate will for their life was to be close to God. However, our, you know, the, the, you know, the day by day will was to follow Jesus. But however, at the end of it, they they didn't just see the end of their their days their life jesus never explained to them that peter was going to be hung upside down on the cross you know how did it take this timid you know sort of always yelling talking out of out of line peter uh that was just following jesus wasn't filled with the holy spirit at the time to the peter that was filled with the holy spirit that didn't see himself worthy enough uh to to be hung like his creator and, and, you know, he couldn't have spoke that as his, as God's will for his life early on following Jesus. And, uh, yeah, I think it's just important that we yeah, walk with God moment by moment. It's going to unfold over time. He's gonna reveal. Wait, you, you said it again. It's been one of a running theme in here is, you know, yeah. God is simplistic and stop overcomplicating it. Boom. Boom. You know, we know God, God's will for my life and your life. I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt. Share the gospel with others. Boom. Show the lo love of Christ to others. Boom. And do everything that you can to get closer to God. Boom. That's simple. So good. Is that not simple? I mean, now, hard to do at times. Yeah. Because of the flesh. Because I'm Boom. a sinner saved by the grace of God, and so are you. So, you know, at times I want to wring people's neck. You know, it's a, yeah. that's a good Southern term, right? At times, I want to run them off the road, or I want to tell them how right I am and how wrong they are. Yeah, exactly. Or that job, do I take that consulting job? Do I do this? Do I marry this person? Do I, do I put whatever you want to in it and then ask, does it bring me closer to God, or does it take mm. me further away from God? Wow. Sometimes you're going to find some things that you're not going to, but there are a lot of times, brother, there's some things that, yes, brings me closer to God. No, does not bring me closer to God. But it's right. So good. It's right from an earthly standpoint. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, wow. you're, not, you're not going out and robbing a bank. You're not going out and, and cheating on your wife. Yeah. So it's right from an earthly standpoint, but it's wrong for where God wants you. True. So the big thing I think you're hitting on is 
am I walking a path that is sin or sacred? And like trying to, trying to, you know, walking, and, and it takes, it's so much that plays into it. That's why you said, I love how you said it's, it's simple, yet it's still profound. Like, it's still something that we have to continually follow God's leading through his word, but through also walking in his spirit, walking according to his spirit. So, yeah, that's yeah. really good. Bro. You know, and we can take we can take things like this and make it to like everyday life. Because I people ask me, you know, video games. Got it. Is there anything wrong with video games? Depends on the content. So you got to preface, you know, asterisk that. But just general, no. But yes, if video games keep you from studying God's word and developing your prayer life and engaging the way you should and keeps you out of church, it's not that necessarily that the video game is bad. It's that you're putting that in front of God. Wow. That's good. That's solid, solid right there. Sim simplistic, right? Simplistic. But the application is the interesting part. Yeah. So, brother, as we as we wrap up today, I, I, I appreciate you you coming on and and sharing such solid, good advice and Thank sharing you, your brother. story. I mean, man, to hear that you know you were contemplating suicide, mm -hmm. taking your yeah. own life, and that a simple social media post about a Bible verse gets you to stop for a moment, mm. a split second so and reconsider. And then we're at what the Lord's doing with you today wow. really backs up. I mean, what you're doing, you know, without walls, what handling life is doing. Yeah. You know, just encouraging people. Look, you don't have to go out and be a minister. You don't have to preach Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You don't have exactly. to travel the world and be an evangelist or a missionary. You can be a minister. That's it. A ministress. How would you say that in the female side? Uh, <laughs> you you can tell it. people of Christ from your cell phone. Yep, that's simple. Through your that's social simple. media. That's and. Simple. That it, 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 it's simple. So for you to share that, I mean, you know, to open up about something that is that, I mean, to show that vulnerability mm -hmm. really lets people know that you're real, man. Oh, thank you, bro. Praise God. It's nothing of me. I'm with you, man. Thank yeah. you. But, you know, we, we, we too many times today as Christians, we see a lot of them out there who my life's perfect because I'm with God. Well, you might need to check where you are with God. Yeah, so true. Because Satan might have you up on a shelf where nobody's bothering you because you're not doing anything for the Lord. For the Lord. Wow. But as we wrap up today, okay. what, what is one of the best books or articles or pod, something that you do outside of scriptures, outside of the Bible, uh -huh. something that you do on a regular routine that helps you in your life that you could recommend to others? Okay. I'll, I'll Besides your podcast, right? I mean, your podcast is solid, yeah. so people need to go sign up. Besides your okay. own podcast. <laughs> okay. Good deal. Good deal. Um, I would say my walks with God truly transform my life. Just my simple getting up early and you're just walking with God. An absence of all the noise, the voices, uh, being in tune with His voice. In so the setting morning, a time, I'm setting aside quality alone time yes it's been vital in my walk with him it's everything from massive decisions to minuscule decisions whether it's a decision of tying my shoes or being in a diagnostic interview god has transformed my heart through just simply walking with him you know uh one of the greatest things even throughout my days i think the reason, the only reason I was able to walk in love was because I was walking with love early in the morning. Yeah. Like I spent time to walk with him and talk with him and allow him to open my heart and humble me because I can get prideful because I'm essentially, you know, getting all these amazing opportunities, book deals, you know, started a podcast, 
reaching quote unquote somewhat thousands of people a day through you know platforms, social media. And I know we're like in the same world, brother Nathan. And I know my prayer will continually go forward over you and your ministry that God will continue to keep us under His mighty hand by humbling us, disciplining us, whatever it takes to keep us Amen. walking according yep. to His will and His ways. So that's my prayer, bro, and that's what I do to get closer and closer to our Father. And do you find, I do in my life, do you find yeah. those days that you don't set that time, you know, oh, I'll do it later when I never do it, yeah. do that also the, the tone of my day is different. Do you find that in your walk as well? Definitely, definitely. Um, when I've so, heard- so if you had a thousand dollar bill, or $1,000 bills on your porch every morning, would you take time to go get them? Would I? Oh, I, I would take time to go get them. Yeah. But something about reading God's word at times and praying and knowing the benefit we're going to get, we don't go do it. Sadly. What, Sadly. what do you think? Why, why do you think that is? What? what pride? Uh, uh, stubbornness? Pride, pride stubbornness. Um, I think a lot of us naturally don't see the beauty of God's promises. We see it from the standpoint of blessings and receiving things and his gifts and his mercy and his love and all this stuff. However, we don't see it from the point where God's word is, is sharp, sharper than a two-edged sword. It's going to, you know, it's going to rebuke us. It's going to discipline us. See, we love that side of his promises, but we don't tend to love the side that is hard, that prunes us, that pricks us, that that, is, uh, that reminds us who we are, which are just finite, you know, futile beings. And he's this almighty God who is wholly different from us, you know? And do you, ever eat, do you ever eat figs? Are you a fig eater? Oh, uh, a fig Newtons? Or? Fig Newtons, yeah. Well, the things that fig Newtons are made out of, little figs. Okay, okay. And as you're I talking there thinking. about that pruning process of growing, yes. yeah, a tree, a fruit tree, uh, a bush like a fig bush, if you don't tr prune it back every year, it will spend all its energy just growing its plant and not growing fruit. Wow. And it That's didn't really, I mean, I've grown up all, I'm all my entire life. I grew up on a farm and pruning stuff, but I, three weeks ago, I'm out there pruning like, seemed like hundreds of little branches and stuff. And I'm thinking, wow. you know, wow, this poor little bush went from, you know, eight feet tall and 10 feet around. I lost all its leaves down to this little, you know, four foot, five foot stumpy looking little thing. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. But had I not done that, it won't, it wouldn't produce fruit this year. Wow. So then I was thinking, well, that's, I mean, that's what God is, doing and done and continues to do in my life yeah. is like okay that's good you got to that point now whoosh. but he doesn't yeah. do it because he's punishing it he's doing it because he loves me and he knows that new growth is going to be bigger and stronger and better fruit amen amen that's so important brother that's so important does it I make wonder, it does it make it easy it doesn't make it easy at all no Unless you, unless you kind of understand it a little bit, but yeah, sometimes he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't let us understand it till later. Till later. Beautiful. I love how you put that till later, till later. It takes time. And, takes time. and real, real quick, bro, that reminds me of just, just thinking of it. Uh, yesterday uh, I was in the kitchen and I realized that we bought food. Um, like at a taco truck like days ago. There's a great taco trucks down here in the South uh, and I highly suggest them. But this is the thing, we bought food a few days ago and I put it in the refrigerator to, uh, to hopefully we'll to eat it the next day. And I forgot that we left it in there over time. And all this time, you know, we start smelling this crazy stinky <laughs> stuff in the refrigerator. So my wife finally noticed it was that and we finally threw it out you know, and, and put it in a trash can and, you know, dumped it. But needless to say, uh, it smells a, a lot better. And I think like that for for Christians, for believers, sometimes it takes us, God, to, to take things out of us, uh, yep. to allow us in order, 
you know, instead of us being a, a stench, we can be an aroma uh, to, to people and play, you know, wherever he's bringing us and calling us to be. We can be that light, that joy, uh, that peace. But apart, you know, we won't be able to do it if we don't get rid of the, the junk. If we don't get rid of the junk, the baggage. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, so how, man, I really appreciate you coming on today. It's been a, I had to have you back again. It's been a, a joy to, and a pleasure to hear your stories and hear the advice and, and see what God's doing in your life Thank you, um, and how he's working in it. And, you know, and I know in anybody listening, it's not like you're on a cakewalk and, you know, everything's like, Oh, it's great. And, you know, every day, <laughs> you know, it's, True. it's, it's a daily, a moment by moment process, Yeah, but you yeah. can find that contentment and joy. So as we wrap up, um, any final thoughts? And then also, where can people find out more about your, your ministry and your podcast and all that you okay. you doing? Know? Awesome, bro. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you, Nathan for, Nathan, for having me. And I know I need to have you on mine as soon as I start doing the interviews. For sure. I can't wait to bring you over to my podcast and so you can speak and encourage and love on the people uh, and share truth with them because I, I just love your heart, man. So praise I appreciate God. Appreciate that. I, Honored. Oh, uh, praise God. The last nugget I would leave people with, uh, just to encourage them wherever they are, just like you were talking about, it's not a cakewalk. It's not an easy walk. Um, and over time, you know, God always shows his faithfulness. But I want to remind you, whoever you are out there, is that allow God to do his work in you and trust that he's dependable. He's, you can depend upon him. He's your deliver, deliverer, uh, whatever you're going through today. Uh, trust and believe that whether it's sickness, whether it's, you know, health problems, whatever it could be, money, finances, it doesn't matter. God's your provider. He's your sustainer. He's a good father. And uh, that would be all that I would have to pour out to them. Now, if you want to find me on social media, you'll go to Rashawn Copeland on Facebook or Twitter. Again, Rashawn Copeland, my podcast is called the Scriptures and Stories Podcast where we bring meaningful stories and powerful scriptures. We share a lot of word and a lot of people's life um, stories, that meaningful stories. Yeah, so. Awesome, brother. Hey, I, you, I you appreciate you being an encouragement. I lo- love to, to see that, that thrill in your eyes and your voice talking about God and what he's done for you. And, of course, I'll put links in everything um, to, your, to your Facebook pages and to your podcast. And if anybody wants to learn more about Handling Life or Nathan Tabor, you can go over to handlinglife.org. And, okay. again, you know, man, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for all those that are, that are listening, even the people I don't know. You know, God is and does care so much about you. Wow. Come on. It's and, good. We have a hard time in our society and our words today from the word father to the word love to the word truth and all of that. But God is all of those things. He is yes. unchanging. Yes. And Good. if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, you know, go to my page or go to Rashawn's or, or, you know, go to a good Bible believing website or just get down on your knees and, and tell God, you know, right now, I don't know you. And I want to have a personal relationship with you. And without you, I'm going to die and go to hell. So forgive me of my sins. Wow. I'm accept you into my heart. Yeah. There's, you know, we, various people have sinners prayers and you can read about them on that. But it's really just coming to the point of saying, God, I need you. Period. Period. I, without Jesus Christ as my personal savior, I'm going to die and go to hell. And I don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. Really simplistic. It's simplistic again. Right, brother? Yeah. So good, brother. So simple. But yeah, so profound. Yep. Well, brother, I appreciate you. Love you in the Lord. I love look you, forward brother. to seeing what the Lord does with you and your ministry in the uh, coming days. Likewise. God bless you. Brother. God bless.